senses of our sins. Purify my heart, cleanse me from Welcome to the seventh day of this beautiful Pentecost Novena. I'm so excited to be sitting here and sharing with you. And today we will be talking about the fruit of faithfulness as a soul's anchor. But before I begin, I'd like to show you this clip from the movie Fireproof. For those of you who haven't watched this movie, Fireproof is the story of this young couple, Caleb and Catherine, who are on the brink of divorce and when they inform their parents about it, Caleb's dad asks him to wait for 40 days and hands him over a book of to-dos that contain acts of services like doing a chore or buying her a gift in the hope that this would make them fall in love all over again. Whether they do or do not, I leave that for you to see. But this clip that I'm about to show you is right in the middle of the movie when Caleb calls his dad up to tell him, Dad, it's not working. Check it out. Caleb, if I were to ask you why you're so frustrated with Catherine, what would you say? She's stubborn. She makes everything difficult for me. She's ungrateful. She's constantly griping about something. Has she thanked you for anything you've done the last 20 days? No! And you'd think after I wash the car, I've changed the oil, do the dishes, clean the house, that she would try to show me a little bit of gratitude. Well, she doesn't. In fact, when I come home, she makes me feel like I'm, like I'm an enemy. I'm not even welcome in my own home, Dad. That is what really ticks me off. Dad, for the last three weeks, I have been over backwards for her. I have tried to demonstrate that I still care about this relationship. I bought her flowers, which she threw away. I have taken her insults and her sarcasm, but last night was it. I made dinner for her. I did everything I could to demonstrate that I care about her, to show value for her, and she spat in my face. She does not deserve this, Dad. I am not doing it anymore. How am I supposed to show love to somebody over and over and over who constantly rejects me? That's a good question.
how am I supposed to show love to somebody over and over and over who constantly rejects me? Like we've seen as an answer to the question, the father points the son to the cross and I am going to point to you the same Christ and the same cross today. But why the faithfulness of Jesus? Almost every movie we've watched, whether it's Hollywood or Bollywood, crime, thriller, mystery, animated movies, horror, or sometimes even romantic movies is based on the idea that when someone is hurt or harmed or killed, he or she comes back to avenge it. And that revenge is what is called the happy ending. But notice that when Jesus was tortured for hours and then brutally crucified, he comes back to his people and says, peace be with you. Look at the faithfulness of Jesus to his mission, to his people, to the task that the Father assigned to him and to the renewed world that he would give back to the Father. That is the kind of faithfulness that you and I are called to. Neither betrayal nor loneliness and not even death could keep Jesus from fulfilling his mission. It was all about loyalty, it was all about commitment and it was all about consistency. And when we experience this kind of faithfulness in our lives, we are drawn by its beauty. Let's go back to the story of Zacchaeus. He was a greedy tax collector and when he experienced Jesus, he was drawn to not only give half his property to the poor, but also give back four times as much to everyone he had cheated. Notice how just one interaction with Jesus was enough to draw Zacchaeus to replicate him. Faithfulness is the response to faith we have in Christ. If we go back to the life of Mother Teresa, she was a teacher in India for 17 years before she experienced what she terms as a call within a call. And from there, there was no stopping her. She opened the missionaries of charity and so many other homes and organizations with, through which she reached the poorest, the lowest and the weakest of society. Imagine she walked on streets and picked lepers and uh, tried and cured the wounds of people with maggots within their flesh. We all know that there is nothing pleasant about seeing maggots eating into flesh or the smell of rotting flesh. But Mother Teresa did it all. And while I'm guessing that most of us might not have been to the missionaries of charity, I'd like to show you the experience of someone who did. When I went to Calcutta, I thought that I had to get to know Mother Teresa. And I mean, in this way, she is a selfless work. She is a selfless work. She is a selfless work. So, for the rest of the day, I knew that I had to get to know Sisters of Charity in Mother Teresa's office. I went out. I took the Sisters of Charity. There was a small office. I said, where is mother? So, in a couple of clothes, a nun type lady was sitting there. She said that mother is at the home for the dying. Now, home for the dying, I don't understand. Home for the dying, I don't ask anyone. There is a dilapidated building. There are those people who are dying, who have no power, who are on their deathbed. She takes care of those people who are at their last stages. I went inside, so I had a strange kind of two people. There was a little bit of a strange kind of smell. It was not a capable of a type. It was a smell. It was like a flesh. You know what I mean? When there was no decaying flesh. So they took me a small hole. Left, they left. They took me like this. And lo, the first sight that I saw. वो स्केबीज बीमारी नहीं होती इस पता नहीं लेप्रेसी पता नहीं स्केबीज मुझे ये भी नहीं पता। Absolutely naked एक कपड़ा बिछा रखा। The guy was groaning, उसके थोड़े-थोड़े लंबे बाल थे। I can never forget। 
وہ اتنے پیار سے اس کے زخم صاف کر رہی تھی اینڈ دا گائے مطلب تو اگر برجیش وہ دیکھ لیتا نا اس بندے کو دیکھ لیتا اور اس کے زخم دیکھ لیتا تو اگر نزدیک کھڑا بھی رہ پاتا نا تو میں شیو کرتا ہوں میں آنےسٹلی تجھے کہتا ہوں ود ان اے سیکنڈ آئی شی اسٹیڈ ایٹ می لائک دیٹ یو نو اور ود ان اے سیکنڈ آئی فیل لائک پیوکنگ الٹی آتی ہے نا میں یوں پکڑ کے نا آئی رین آؤٹ آئی رین آؤٹ نوجوت سنگھ سدھو دی انٹرنیشنل کرکٹر وہاں نالی کے اوپر وا وا کر رہا وا وا کر رہا سات آٹھ دس منٹ کے بعد شیکھے مارا مادر آئی وانٹو میٹ یو وہ دس ہزار روپے میری جیب میں ہے مادر آئی وانٹو میٹ یو کم مائی سن فالو می شی واکڈ وہاں بیٹھ گئی تو دیکھ میں نے اہنکار میں وہ دس ہزار روپے نکالے اور ٹیبل پہ رکھتی کہ مادر You are an instrument of good. So I have come here to assist you. I will be really obliged if you accept this. She looked at me and she says, Sam, I don't need your money. I need your time. Can you spend time with these people? Can you give me some days where you can nurse them? آنکھ میں آنسو آ گئے ایک دم سے میں ستب رہ گیا میں نے کہا یار کیسے لوگ ہیں اس دنیا میں مطلب پیسے نہیں لے رہی مجھ سے اور مجھے کہہ رہی ہیں کہ یہاں آ کے ان کی سیوا کر سیوا میرے بس کی نہیں تھی میں اس کے پاس دو منٹ کھڑا نہیں ہو پائے تو میں سیوا کہاں سے کر لوں میرے لوہے کانٹے کھڑے میں نے آ کے پھر چار لائن کا سٹینزا لکھا ورجیش سن بغیر ضبط کیے کچھ نہیں ملتا بغیر زخم سیے کچھ نہیں ملتا یوں ہی بے تاب ہونے سے کیا بغیر وقت دیے کچھ نہیں ملتا ہر چیز کی قیمت چکانی پڑتی ہے یوں ہی مفت میں کچھ نہیں ملتا ان انادر انسیڈن ویر شی پکس اپ ا مین ویڈ میگٹس فرم دا گٹرز شی منشن ایٹ ٹک دیم تری آورز تو کلین ہم اپ کمپلیٹلی تری آورز وین ا برادر ان کرائیس سدو کورنٹ ایون سٹین دیر فر ا منٹ But you know what was the beauty of it all? Just before that man died, he told Mother Teresa, I lived like an animal in the streets, but now I will die as an angel loved and cared for. No, it wasn't easy. She was abused, made fun of, threatened about even losing her life. But nothing stopped her from being faithful to the commitment she made to Christ, which she penned as, Give me the strength to be the light of their lives, so that I may lead them at last to you. Faithfulness in so many ways is merely being consistent. Another definition or another translation of the word faithful is steadfast. And to be steadfast is to be consistent. It means I do what I say I was going to do. And even in the face of difficulties, challenges and failures, I literally push myself to staying committed to it. But our human weaknesses are such that we commit ourselves to doing something and when we begin we are so full of energy and we are so full of wanting to achieve it. We do it once, we do it twice, we do it thrice and then we fail or even sometimes just give up. So it's very easy for us to stand here and blame situations and justify and say my life was so dilapidated. Look at all the resolutions we made on 1st Jan 2021 and here we are 160 to 170 days since either making excuses or feeling sorry for ourselves. Now remember Faithfulness is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is a response to faith. And therefore our commitments and our faithfulness should stem from the Holy Spirit. It is a fruit of the Spirit and can be brought forth only by the Spirit. It is when we make these commitments by ourselves and for ourselves that we try to execute them by our own strength. 
whereas our faithfulness should be for the glory of God, for the work of God, for the love of God and therefore should be executed by the strength of God. Now while prayer is the most integral part of faithfulness, opportunities of faithfulness show up in our everyday lives. You show faithfulness when you do the dishes, when you complete an assignment for work or school, or even when you consistently wake up early every morning. Faithfulness begins maybe by just doing the everyday small mundane things. We want successful careers. Faithfulness is sitting with your books and studying when you have to. William McRaven said, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. In our relationships, with our parents, faithfulness is about working with your mom and completing a chore with her even when you're frustrated that she's constantly nagging you. In friendships, faithfulness is leading your friend to doing more of what makes him or, more, or her more holy than happy. And marriage itself is a commitment of being faithful to your partner for life. None of us will be perfect. None of us will ever be perfect, but we are called to be consistent. We got to show up day after day in every circumstance and in the power of God. Now, this is my suggestion. Stay faithful to God and not in your own strength. Ask God for his strength. And when you fail, go back to him and ask again. And when you fail again, know that he loves you and go back and ask him for strength again. And he will give you the strength. Things might not change immediately, but slowly by slowly, as he begins to work in you and take you through every circumstance, you will notice that he has given you the strength to be faithful in small things. And because you are faithful in small things, he will give you the strength to be faithful in greater ones. Amen.